Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa I was real nervous, but after hearing <laughs> Brother Ahmed speak, now I'm just slightly nervous. Still a little bit nervous. Um, my name is Tahida Rashid, and I'm representing the Muslim Youth Association at Mass Judah War Theme here in Oakland. And today I just want to talk about the, how, why the MYA, Muslim Youth Association, is so important to the health of our youth and community. Not just the MYA, but groups like the MYA. Okay, so what is the MYA? The MYA is a group that was started 10 years ago, um, where the Bilal was the leader of it, and it was just a group of teenagers who got together and decided, we want to get out of Oakland. Not, not, not acknowledging it as our home, but we want to do things outside of Oakland. So they set up a group, and they raised money, and they traveled. They went places, they went to Canada, they traveled places across America, and so that's what it stopped for a while, and that's what we're trying to bring back. And so we started a few months ago, and we started raising money, and we took a few small trips, and now we're trying to raise money to go on big trips. And um, the group is for um, ages 12 and up, and um, that's basically what we're dealing with. And, um, and I think it's really important that we have these kind of trips and things across, because we need to know about other places and other people, because if we don't know about those other places and people, we can't respect those other places and people. So we have to, I mean, it's even, even if it's only in the United States, we don't have to necessarily go to Africa or go to, you know, um, I don't know, go to Asia right away. We, but even if we go somewhere else in the United States, you know, it still helps us out a lot. And it not only helps the youth, but it helps the parents because they don't have to worry about their kids being on the streets. They know that their children are in a constructive environment where they're learning, where they're being productive, and where they're learning responsibility. And, um, and along with that responsibility comes leadership qualities, the same leadership that we're going to need for the future. Because each one of us depends on one another to make this group successful. It's no one person. It's no I'm doing everything. I'm doing this and I've been doing that. It's we're doing this. We're doing that. We're making this group successful. Um, and in the group we have officers. It's just like any organization that's run. We have officers. We have a president, vice president, sergeant in arms, and each one of them does their job. Each one of them does it good because I know because I'm there. <laughs> so, um, and then another point I want to talk about, I want to talk about peer pressure. Peer pressure exists inside of our group as well as outside of our group. But I know from experience, I know from being a part of the Muslim community and being a part of the non-Muslim community that the peer pressure most likely that you'll have with, within the group, is most, you have a better chance of that being positive. And the peer pressure that you will receive outside of the group, you have a better chance of that being negative. Not to ignore the fact that there does, ex that bad peer pressure does exist if within the group. But we can monitor that, and we can correct that, and we have Muslim adults there to sh set examples to show us that that's not right. You shouldn't be doing that. You should be telling that sister, hey, go for what you want, you know, instead of saying, don't do this, don't do that. So we can monitor it and correct it. Um, uh, most of the people inside of our group, we went to Sister Claire Muhammad School together. We were all in elementary school together. So I know them really, really well. And now we all go to different schools. Me, myself, I go to, um, I go to a private school in Marin. And, um, and I have a lot of, uh, what should I say, a lot of non-Islamic influences there. It's a good school, great school. I love the school. But it's a lot of things that I'm missing at that school. But one thing, one important thing that I'm missing is that I'm not able to spend a lot of time with my friends, the real friends that I have at Master the War Scene. And this group allows me to do that and allows me to actually not just interact with them, but be productive with them and come together with them. And um, the friendship that I have there is probably stronger than any other bond I have with any other person, meaning my friends outside of um, Master the War Scene. We don't just, um, and the thing is that we're not forced to be together. We like coming together. We like being with each other. We, like, we look forward not only to the big trips that we have planned, but we look forward to the meetings on Thursday and Sunday. I say, hey, I'm going to my NYA meeting, you know. Um, sometimes we don't even do work. 
You know, sometimes we're supposed to be planning for some big trip and we end up talking about who knows what, sitting in a group laughing, talking, you know, and then of course when Brother Blau comes around, we act like we did something. <laughs> but, we <laughs> but we do, you know, we just, we just love being around each other. And, and I, I mean, it's a good feeling to know that you have one good friend, but it's a great feeling to know that you have a group of good friends. It's a much greater feeling. And we need more people like Brother Bilal who's willing to sacrifice his time to, for the youth. You know, he takes time away from his family, his job, just to come together for us. And it's important we need people to realize that, of course, you have your individual biological mothers and fathers who feed you, who clothe you, who are there with you every day. But we are the children of the community. And that's important. That's important we, because we all need to watch over each other. That's tradition. It's tradition in, um, in African history. I mean, if, if, if you want to go that far, you know, in our history. You're not just, I'm not just Sister Zakia Rashid's child, but I'm Sister Amatala's child. You know, I'm Sister Khadija's child. So um, that's important. And if you don't give the children that sense of family and sense of belonging and that sense of, um, and that attention that they need, they're going to look for it somewhere else. And that somewhere else could be your worst nightmare. And I know that because I see my friends looking for family somewhere else and that family is not the family where they need to be. They need to be at Master the Lord Dean. And, um, and you can't, and, and prayer, prayer is important. When I, I can say, for, I can speak, I think I speak for the youth when I say when we're with our other friends, we don't, we, it's easy to neglect your prayers. Nobody's praying, nobody's thinking about prayer. So you get caught up in that. You get up caught, you know, oh, it's prayer time. You don't think about that. But I could say if I'm on a trip with the NYA for three days, inshallah, we're going to pray 15 times. Inshallah, that's what happens. Um, and, of course, I, can't, I have to say, um, I have to use the, the Quran and the Sunnah. Prophet Muhammad said, from zero to seven, you're supposed to love and hug and play with your children. From 7 to 14, you're supposed to discipline them. And from 15 and up, you need to be a friend. And that's what our group is basically made up of, of uh, around 15 and older, or people coming into that age. And we need the adults to be friends to us, basically. Talk to us, relate to us. Let us know what it was like when you were a kid, and, you know, and when you did stuff that wasn't right, and why that wasn't good, and how it affected you. We need people to tell us that. If we don't have nobody to tell us that, then obviously we're going to be trying to be curious and we're going to learn the hard way. Um, and Quran, which is most important. Now I'm going to read this again. He used this when he was speaking, this um, same um, ayat of the Quran, but I'm going to read it again because I think it's real important. Certainly they are those, they, they are losers who kill their children from foolishness and ignorance without knowledge and make unlawful what Allah has provided naturally for them inventing and forging his against the law. They have certainly gone astray and have no guidance. Now, um, in response to this quote, I like to say, don't keep away from us what you know is going to be our salvation. Okay? Our salvation is the correct teachings of the Quran. And to the children, I say, the response, some of the responsibility is on you. All the responsibility is not your parents. So don't keep from yourselves what you know is going to be your salvation. You know, um, you have to learn for yourself. You have to pray for yourself. If you with a group of your friends, you know, a group of your Muslim brothers and sisters, oh, it's time for Zor. Let's go pray. You know, or if you see your friend slipping, you know, don't just let them fall. If you know that's your brother and sister and you know they're going to catch hell for that, let them know. Okay? And I can't leave without telling you what we need help with. Just a minute. Just one minute. Just let me tell you how you can, you know, ask yourself, how can I help? And I'm going to give you a list of that so you don't have to answer it by yourself. Okay. Um, we need help people to come to meetings. You know, that always gives support. We need help with transportation, chaperoning the trips, not just being there telling people what to do, but be a friend, talk to them, play with us, but set an example. 
I tell you, most of us learn through examples. A lot of it is so unconscious. It's not conscious. We don't say, oh, we want to imitate Snoop Dogg. We don't, you don't say that to yourself. Matter of fact, you might tell yourself the opposite. I'm not trying to be like him. But it's unconscious. It comes. And we need something to counteract that. And if we don't see nobody to do otherwise, we're going to imitate what's there for us. Okay? So we need role models. And if you have a skill, and a lot of you do, or you have jobs where you specialize in something, bring that to us. Teach us that. You know? You never know. We might follow in your footsteps. And we, it's, I mean, it's so many connections that I did not know that we had in this community. But when I, when I had to do a project or something, he'd say, oh, brother and so-and-so, or sister so-and-so, she's in this. We, that's stuff I should have known a long time ago. Stuff that people won't ask about. But if you tell them that, they may be interested in that. We need help with community service. We go visit the elders every now and then. We, um, during Ramadan, we're planning a street cleanup on Mash Your Word, Dean, everybody. A street cleanup. Okay, we're we going to be the driving force behind that, but we need your help. And I know everybody has responsibilities cleaning up their own stuff, but still, <laughs> we have to keep our masjid clean. Mm -hmm. And um, we also plan to feed the homeless, so we're going to need stuff like a loaf of bread. And you know, and that dollar is nothing compared to what Allah is going to give you. Okay, and you can say your excuse is, well, I have a, you know, I need to work. Work is so important, I know. And I know you have to feed your children. I know you have to do this and that. But if you compare the time you're going to spend with us, the few days you're going to spend with us, to compare that to the amount of time you could be spending with your child when they're on drugs or when they're alcoholics or when they're in trouble with the law. And trust me, you won't have no problem giving that little bit of effort to the MYA or whatever group in your community. And all we're trying to do is create moral and decent human beings. And once we do that, they won't have no trouble saying, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashadu anna Muhammad abdahu rasulu. Excuse me, that might have been a little bit wrong then. <laughs> but you know I haven't taken mine, and I'm, I'm struggling too with the religion, and I'm struggling, and I'm, I'm trying. And that's all I have to say. That's all I have to say.